Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Bulletproof Your Business webinar series. Um, I trust we are finding you safe and obviously at home. Um, the reason why we're doing this webinar is we've managed at our entry to, to really bulletproof our business in terms of the technologies we use, the processes we put in place. And David came up with an idea and said, look, we, we're doing something well here. I think this is some advice that we can share. And uh, obviously, considering this lockdown period, we felt this might be an appropriate time to allow people to, to really start thinking about what they, how their business is structured, what technology they use. So this webinar series will really touch on a multitude of, of, of different elements inside your business. Today's session is really just an overview of what we'll be discussing in this series. Um, and by no means do we say Iron Tree's chosen path is the correct path. There's many ways to skin a cat. We have just found that uh, the technology array that we've put in place for us works, and uh, this is what we want to share today. Um, our panelists include David Lees, who will be running this, this webinar today. He's the joint CEO of Iron Tree. We've also got Stephen Cohen. He's the business development and strategy director of Iron Tree. And then we welcome Marisette Topham. She's the national sales manager at Euphoria, who's a valued partner of Iron Tree. All right, guys, enjoy. David, over to you. Thanks, Jaco. Yeah, just to reiterate what Jaco was saying, we've been planning this kind of a webinar series over the past few weeks. Uh, because what Iron Tree does is uh, we, we like to think all of our solutions encompass uh, business continuity planning, specifically from a technology aspect. Um, and when the coronavirus hit and the lockdown period became uh, uh, um, legislated, we thought this was even a better time to actually host this webinar. Uh, but just, uh, just to uh, say again, it wasn't planned because of the coronavirus. It was really planned just to, to depict the kind of uh, business scenario that we think all medium to, uh, small to medium businesses should be looking at. Um, and if you're looking at the slide right now, that what we feel is this is kind of more or less a current situation that uh, most of you have some kind of office, whether it's a building or whatever it is, with a whole lot of people in the office, you're probably connecting to a telecom PABX, which is routing all your voice communication. Um, and you may have a, some kind of a server room in your, in your office building, or you're just sort of using one of your computers as a server which is connected out to the internet. Um, you, you then uh, connecting to your customers, your banks, your suppliers, wherever from that uh, server. Um, and you might have a backup uh, situation in the cloud where you're backing up your data. And potentially you might, some of you might be using Office 365. At some point in this webinar, Yako is going to be switching on a poll. We're gonna ask you to just fill in uh, you know, cho choose which of the technologies we're going to show you today or mention today you're using. But we felt this is kind of a typical environment that's happening right now. We feel that um, with the kind of disruptions that you have in business today, and I'm talking about things like load shedding, uh, telecom discontinuing their copper lines, um, uh, theft that we have in this country, a lot of data corruption because of the load shedding. Uh, so load shedding if you've got your on-premise server doesn't only mean that you can't potentially work during load shedding because you can't connect to, to uh, anything outside of your office, but you also could have data corruption from spikes. And then you've also got cybercrime. Uh, most of these kind of disruptions means that you shouldn't really be stuck in the situation that you're looking at right now. So what, we, what we've done at Iontree and what we propose is the right sort of array of technology solutions for any size business today and, and very available to small businesses is what you're seeing on your screen right now. So, and we're gonna discuss all of these different elements, just an overview in this session. And then as you've seen on the invitation, each one of these elements will have a focused dedicated webinar over the next uh, two and a half weeks. So I'll, I'll refer back to the slide at, at the end of the presentation, but essentially what you're looking at is a company that's, that's able to move all their workers to a remote situations, or one's in an apartment, a couple in houses, they've got um, their laptops at home with a, a, a voiceover IP telephony headset on, 
connecting into the cloud and using all the technologies that you that you see. Um, and so we're going to start off with cloud hosting, and I'm going to hand over to to my partner Stephen Cohen to just talk a little bit about uh, cloud hosting. Steve, over to you. Thanks, Dave. Okay, everyone. Um, the cloud hosting solution really allows you to take all your in-house activity and software programs and put it in the cloud. Now, Antri uses Vodacom's data center where we have our own privately owned infrastructure in their data center, which means that once you move all your, let's call it your mission critical applications into the cloud on a hosted server, that really means that all you need from your office it's just an internet connection. And you can through the internet and run all your programs in the cloud. So, you know, once you just consider that um, fundamental premise, you can then start to imagine all the advantages that come along with it. Um, so first of all, it cleans up your mess in your office completely. Because so many people are fine, walk around with hard drives, with data backed up. Um, applications on laptops, on desktops, on servers, you now have a single point that you can work off. And it, obviously your risk is now minimized completely because if your whole office, let's say, was robbed or burned down, you don't have to worry about that at all because essentially very little is added onto your laptops, your workstations in your office because all the production activity is now taking place in your hosted cloud. So pretend you lost everything in your office. You would go out and get a new computer. You would just connect through the internet to your cloud server, which would be running QuickBooks, Pestle, whatever it is. And you would carry on working. Um, what it also means is that you never really have to upgrade your hardware again. I mean, upgrading hardware really becomes an aesthetic thing. If you want a new, let's say, laptop because the screen's much better, you'll be buying it for those aesthetic reasons, not for I need more processing power reasons, because all the processing power is happening on the server in the cloud. So, you know, so often people say, my machine's slowing down, I need more memory, um, or I'm running out of hard disk space. You will never run out of hard disk space or processing power because if you need more hard disk space, the whole office will come together and say, at the moment on our cloud server, pretend we've got two gigabytes of data storage. We need to upgrade it to four. You will just phone your cloud service provider, let's say Entry, and say, okay, I just need you to give me more space. All we'll do is just click a switch and say, add another 100 gigabytes or a terabyte. If you find that your programs are running a bit too slow, we'll just add more memory or more CPU power. So it means that the costs that you pay are so definable. So when you're drawing up a budget, let's say for the next year, you'll know you're paying two or 3,000 Rand a month for the server, but that's it. That will be your monthly charge and it will only change if you either increase or decrease the power that you need from your hosted solution provider, which in this case will be Antry. So a lot of people say to me, you know, Stephen, that 2,000 Rand a month is expensive, but when you think about the simplicity that it brings to your organization, your, your RT service provider, he, he will have much less work to do because you just got internet connection into a hosted server in our, on our premises at Vodacom. So you don't have people running around fixing up network issues and printer issues and all that kind of stuff. That stuff just continues as normal. You're not upgrading hardware. So when you think about the costs of using a virtual private server, you need to think about all the costs associated with what you're going through at the moment um, and, and how your, your life is just so much more simple and clear. And obviously working from anywhere. So you can be in the office working on Pastel now you want to go home, you, can, you don't have to take your laptop with you. You can work on your home computer and just log into the cloud server and continue like you never left. So your infrastructure management at the bottom of the slide is just so significant 
in, in this scenario. And, and I really challenge you to, to think about what did you spend actually on RT in the last year? Not only on support and services, but also downtime and frustration. All these things go away completely. Also remember that the, um, the power issue, I mean, at Vodacom's data center, they've got enough diesel for six months to run. So once you've got your laptop with better your battery and an internet connection on a 4G line, you don't even have to worry. Um, I see there's some chats coming in. Yaku, uh, what are the questions? Uh, Steve, it was just a, a gentleman who had to leave and asked us to send him the recording, which obviously we will do. Okay. And then the point about data corruption, I just want to talk about that. There's a specific example of a friend of mine who runs a huge factory out in Brits. They manufacture plastic bags, uh, shade cloth, uh, synthetic lawn. So when these huge machines turn on in their factory every morning, often it actually um, messes around with the power. And what that does is it creates, they've got a huge server running in-house and it corrupts the data. Think about now that all your processing is actually taking place in a data center at Vodacom, which means that any power issues that you have on your premises doesn't affect anything. Pretend you're working on this hosted server, pretend you're running Pastel. Now remember, Pastel's actually running on the hosted server. So if your whole office lost power, let's say Eskimab load shedding, you don't have to worry about it because the power at Vodacom is still up, which means that Pastel's still running. It just means you'll have to log in again. Or, or something like that, but you won't have any data corruption, which is a massive issue with hosted solutions. It solves that problem completely. And I remember in my time as managing director of Pastel, we offer, I mean, most of our support issues were around data corruption, which now goes away completely. Okay, Thanks, Dave, Steve. I, I, just, I just want to add to that, and obviously we're going to go into this in a lot more detail in the session on uh, hosting and we'll show you an example of one of our hosted uh, servers. But just to, uh, I just want to stick on this slide in a set for a second and this is kind of what happens at the moment. But just a story, we've got a client who we hosting who's a nationwide hardware supplier. They have 50 remote locations um, and used to have their own on-premise server which uh, the IT uh, director told us a month after we'd shifted them to our hosting server, he phoned our, uh, uh, Trent at our office in Joburg and said, you know, um, before we hosted, I used to spend my whole day checking that all the branches were synchronizing and everything was updated on our server. And since we went hosted, I come in in the morning and I wonder what I'm gonna do today. Um, so that, that was kind of the difference to, to his life. Um, Dave, if I can just add a point to that, uh, just yes. so that people understand it properly. Um, Evolution has a, a uh, module, and so does Pestel, in fact, called Distributed Processing or, or Synchronization. So if you have a branch in Port Elizabeth, Cape Town, Durban, and Joburg, as people are entering data, all these different locations are now synchronizing their databases to make sure everything agrees. Once you move to a hosted environment, you actually do not have that situation. And what David just said now, I have a friend as well, who said they're always having their databases. I call it just a list of customers going wonky because the synchronizations aren't up to date. So telephone numbers didn't agree in their customer database and balances were different. And it takes an enormous amount of, of time to fix that. And also it's lousy working in an environment where you can't trust the data implicitly. Once you move everything to a hosted server, you're not having the synchronization anymore because everybody's sitting on one machine effectively. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so we'll tell you more in, and I think at the next session, if I'm not mistaken, correct, uh, Yako on Wednesday is cloud hosting. So we're going to move on now and I'm going to hand it, hand back to Yako to talk about the next component that we, we use ourselves and we recommend and some of you might be using all of of uh, uh, Microsoft 365 or some of it, but Yaka is going to tell you about the components. So Yaka, over to you. Thanks, David. Cool. So 
there's a there's a new let's call it naming convention that Microsoft released. So everybody's referring to Office 365, and you've got all your suites of uh, products, etc. But the the actual cloud solution um, since probably about a couple of months ago is now in fact Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365 encompasses Office 365. It encompasses your Windows 10 licensing, enterprise mobility, security, all those kind of things. But why this has become such an important aspect in our business is we for for as long as I've been working with IN3 six years almost um, we've we've relied on email exchange uh, with all the benefits that it brings it brings uh, multiple devices into play synchronized calendars etc but now that and we've relied on an exchange server um, for for many a year and I'm sure most of you guys also still use uh, an on-prem exchange server but with Office 365's exchange, this exchange moves into the cloud and there's significant benefits to it. I'm not going to list the cloud hosting benefits to you. It's pretty much going to be exactly the same, but it just gives you so much more mobility in terms of using different devices, using it from different locations, etc. The synchronized calendars is a huge aspect. Um, I mean, when we started uh, pushing Office 365, one of the first questions people started asking is, yeah, but if, if I have a calendar invite and I accept it at my work, it doesn't show on my mobile device. That is one of the clearest examples of where an exchange hosted calendar would actually eradicate that issue. Another big aspect with this suite of products is the collab collaboration of documents. Now, Iantree, and I'm going to go into this into, in a second a little bit more, but Iantree, through trial and error, have explored multitude of solutions in terms of using documents, uh, file storage, etc. And of all the tools that we've used, this is by far the simplest way to collaborate on documents. Um, if you use the sharing application or the collaboration application uh, that the solution offers, um, you simply just use one version of a document and everybody can be working on it in the exact same time. Changes are being tracked, version controls are being maintained, and the storage is, is actually quite seamless and very secure. And that's one of the biggest aspects that Microsoft has, has, has punted with the solution is the improved security around it. So Dave, if you just go to the next slide. So one of the, the, the strongest applications um, from, from this Office 365 suite is, is a tool called Teams. So we were quite scared of this tool. We've been relying on uh, Slack for a long time. Before that, we relied on Skype to do our video calling. And we also use Zoom as the one that we're using currently in webinar. But what teams actually offer you is everything in one. So it's a common space where everybody in the company can start their day off. They can view all activities uh, in terms of document sharing, important announcements, activities in terms of uh, channels that they belong to. So you could have specific uh, channels like a sales department or you could have project channels and all of this sits in one space. So uh, that hub on the second bullet point the way that it actually all works together is you can use all your office applications within this one space. If you're collaborating on a PowerPoint, like we did with this PowerPoint that we're showing, we used one version, it was shared in one group, and everybody could access that exact same PowerPoint at the same time. And you've got all the benefits with all the other applications, uh, in, and it, it acts in the exact same way. So if you start your day and you've got Teams fully operational in your business, this is the first thing that you will open. This is even actually beats emails in this case, because you first need to understand what internal structures have moved, what conversations are taking place. Maybe a client spoke to uh, one of your clients, etc. And you need to actually be made aware of that before you actually start opening your emails. So Teams is the hub that you will go to to look at uh, any chats directed at you, any mentions in teams that you belong to, any meetings that you've got up and running that's, that's coming because it's synchronized directly with your calendar that you've got running on your normal outlook, for instance. And then there's also the very good file storage and collaboration um, aspect to this. So, uh, Dave, you can just go to the next screen for me quickly. So, you've got functionality built into this uh, application that you could actually run... Uh, 
your entire business from. You can actually ask questions. You can even create a team that you invite external people that's not part of your business and you can invite them to uh, come into a specific team. So let's say you're running a project with uh, two or three um, specific clients. You can actually create a team and just um, or a channel within your team and you can actually invite those guys to be uh, collaborating with you to have to be part of the conversation at the end of the day. Another big aspect, next slide please Dave, another big aspect that we've actually uh, started using more and more is the video calling functionality. So every morning at quarter past eight since the lockdown has been enforced our entire company jumps onto a call and the quality is excellent the ability to kind of mask your background is a nice little functionality. There's, um, they, uh, Steve, you'll like this. There's actually a few hacks that you can um, create a different type of background. So if you feel like beach weather today, you could actually create a beach backdrop for yourself and, and use that as, as your wallpaper behind you. So this, this functionality really improves the, the collaboration. And yeah, we're going to drill into, into a lot of the functionality in its dedicated session. I think it's on Friday, um, where I'm just going to show you how this works in practical, uh, for practical implementation. Um, trust me when I say we've used many a tool. This is by far the most comprehensive, all-encompassing one that we found. The call quality is excellent. Um, I know there's even ability to incorporate Skype for business into this. So you could buy potentially credits. So you could use this as a phone system as well. But uh, at the end of the day, I think just the, the sheer amount of applica applications that you can actually run with this, uh, with this tool is, is immense. So uh, okay. I look forward to chatting to you on Friday about this. Yes, Steve. Um, you know, since uh, I think what I love about these sessions is, is we're sharing uh, Iantree's own internal experiences with the audience that chooses to join these sessions. It's not yeah. like a sales pitch from us. We're actually sharing stuff that we've learned, we've tripped up on. I mean, you know that for two years, we've had so many different applications. And mm -hmm. after using Teams for the two or three months that we've been using it, I have to say that I believe this is going to become Microsoft's flagship product. It's it, like you even spoke about changing backgrounds. I think that people, their teams will be their desktop uh, within a couple of months. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think, David, you sent out an email earlier today about the, the sheer growth of what teams specifically has experienced in the last couple of weeks even. Um, this seems to be the go-to app for everybody now working remotely. Um, I think they're dwarfing the competition uh, just with, with, with quality in their product itself. Um, but yeah, Steve, obviously with any new application that you introduce in a company, you're going to get hiccups. Um, but I think the hiccups has been resolved very quickly. Uh, it usually comes, it comes down to user error or somebody not using the application correctly. Um, one thing I, I'm excited to share with you guys on Friday is the integration ability of teams. Um, I mentioned just the, the off-the-shelf applications that you could use in it, obviously the office suite of products, but the integration with third-party uh, applications is, is really amazing. Um, and, and I'm excited to show that to you guys on, on Friday. Yaku. Okay. I, I, Yaku, I just want to add to that. I just, what I love about Teams is how it brings everything together. So Yaku mentioned it's great we're using it in this lockdown period. We have a a video staff sit meeting every morning at quarter past eight, but we use it in the office as well. And if you think about it, it's like it gives you a portal where you can just focus everything. So everyone uses email, you know, you, you start a meeting, you send a document, you copy 300 people and then 200 people send back a little change and copy another hundred people. And you just, eventually you don't really know what's going on. Teams allows you to create, focus channels where you can actually drill down into the stuff that's applicable to you. You can schedule a call that uh, encompasses the people that are involved in that particular task in your business. It just brings everything together. When you schedule a meeting, it puts a button on your calendar that you just click to join the meeting. So it really just brings everything together. That's what I like about it. It just simplifies the way you work. Yeah, Dave, I just wanted to add to that because Yaku did say, and David, you did touch on this point, um, it's a great way to work remotely. I have to tell you that it is a great way to work remotely, but more than that for me is that it's, it's a great way to work, full Correct. stop. 
whether yeah. or not, and I think that's what David was saying. We, you, we started using this thing three months ago. Uh, before there was any speak about, you know, lockdown periods. It's a fantastic way to, to, for your office to run, for your business to run, in fact. I just need to make that point. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next section here, but I just want to make one final point that if anyone is interested in anything we're saying today, just send an email to, to us. Uh, um, Yaka will give you the address to send it to. But just on the, on the Teams thing, I'm sure a lot of you know about Office 3 or Microsoft 365. You may be using it. I think hardly anyone's using Teams. We have a, the ability to offer you a six-month free trial on the Teams application. So if anyone's interested to try it out, just uh, Yaka will give you the email address. Let us know and we'll contact you. And, and just to add to that, uh, the Iron Office is totally operational in this period. Everyone is working remotely. Whatever we can do in the office, we are able to still do whilst we in this lockdown period. Now I'm going to move on to cybersecurity, which is the next component of our, of our cloud suite of products. Um, and just a bit of a background, the cybersecurity threat in the world today, I'm not going to read everything on the slide, but some of these, these stats are quite um, scary, that there's a new cyber um, attack 30, every 39 seconds, an average of over 2,000 per day. Um, and 95% of the attacks are, are as a result of human error. Um, and really, once again, this is going to be covered in more detail. But just to give you some very interesting information, why is cybercrime so relevant and so pervasive in the world today? And really, the enabler has been cryptocurrency. And I was, always find people are quite... Um, interested to hear about this because you don't really think about it you think well you know why is there so much cyber crime how does it how has it become such a big business in the world today because it is a business i mean there are guys who have uh, websites with call centers when they hit you with ransomware that you can call in and and uh, work out a, a payment schedule for the ransom and it's really become a massive business because of cryptocurrency because before cryptocurrency if you, if you wanted to extract money from someone, they had to deposit into a bank account. It probably took a while. And that, those monies, those funds could be traced. But with cryptocurrency, it's untraceable. Um, and, and this has really made cybercrime possible to be a massive business. I just want to compare why, 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 do, why should you think about layers of security in your business? And what we, when we talk about cyber. Uh, cloud-hosted uh, cyber security, we're talking about different levels of security, not just traditional antivirus, which we'll discuss in a bit more detail, which is kind of dead in our view. But if you compare your business to your house, I mean, at home, you've all got this kind of um, scenario where you've got a house, you've got burglar bars, you've got insurance, you've got armed response company, you've got a dog, you've got electric fence, you've got these multiple layers of security. And you probably wouldn't feel safe without any single one of these layers. But when you compare that to a business today, you should be thinking in the, along the same lines that you need layers of security against infiltration from cyber, cyber crime. So initially, uh, the, primarily you need an automated backup, which is covered in one of our sessions. You need potentially disaster recovery solution, which I'll, I'll talk about a bit later. And you need these various layers of cyber security with web filtering and patch management. So let me just go to the next slide and discuss some of those. Okay, so why should you think of a cloud hosted cyber security solution? And that's what we do. We don't sell traditional antivirus software that you load on every device in your, in your business. And once a day, it connects to some kind of server, potentially, if it's set up correctly and downloads, you know, yesterday's virus file pattern, which, which will protect you tomorrow against yesterday's viruses. But by, by now, there's another 2,000 viruses, which will only be downloaded in tonight's signature file uh, download. So traditional antivirus is dead. You need a system that you can re re effectively remotely manage your whole environment. So whether you've got a service provider, and I'm sure some of our resellers are listening in on this webinar, or you've got your own IT manager, you need someone who can manage the environment, who can see uh, how many devices you've got on your network. And, and you'd be surprised how many companies don't know 
that they've got devices. We we met a, a reseller. Yako and I had a meeting with a reseller about a year ago. We got a new client and and discovered uh, when he did a network audit that they had a server that was sitting in a broom closet, which was covered by like sort of old dish rags and brooms and stuff, which they didn't even know was there. And, and fortunately for them, had been running for like three years without uh, ever breaking down. Uh, they didn't even know it was there. Um, and, and if you have some kind of cloud hosted cybersecurity solution with network auditing capabilities, you will discover what's on your network. You'll be able to see which, which uh, devices are, are updating continuously, which ones have the latest operating systems patches, all that kind of stuff. You can't do that without uh, some kind of management tool. Um, I've spoken about the zero day window. So what, just to go back to what I said in the previous slide, if you've got a traditional antivirus system, you're actually only getting a virus signature pattern update uh, probably usually 24 hours after a virus, within the 24 hour window after viruses have been discovered. So your zero day window, they call the, the point that the amount of time you compromised in that your antivirus system is not seeing latest virus uh, um, attacks could be anything from a minute to 24 hours. If you're using a cloud hosted solution, it's continuously accessing an online intelligent database of new viruses. In our case, we use a product called Panda, which has got a laboratory in Spain. And we love the fact that it's in Spain because it's not uh, Eastern European uh, company, which kind of we feel sometimes is suspect these days. It's a Spanish um, company, which has got a lab with, I don't know, 30 technicians or something, which are continuously updating their signature files uh, 24 hours a day. We also have a solution that protects against all cyber crime. So we, we're not only looking at viruses that have actually been recognized, we're comparing uh, applications which are trying to run again on your system against normal user behavior or um, executables that don't appear to be executing legitimately. So let me explain that one. If you get an email with what looks like a word dot doc attachment and you click on it, what, what uh, a lot of cyber criminals are doing is, is um, disguising their applications to look like a regular application. So you might think it's word dot doc. Actually, it might be word.doc.hack or something like that, which you don't see. And if you click on that, what the Panda Cloud uh, solution says is, well, hold on a second, this looks like a word.doc, but it's actually not executing in the way that that file normally does, so we're going to stop it. So we actually protect against stuff which hasn't been recognized as uh, uh, malware yet. We also have a solution that we can block devices. So especially applicable to remote workers, if people are working at home and maybe they've got children or, or someone who, who's trying to plug in a USB drive into your, your remote device and trying to run some kind of a fancy game or something which is actually malware. Uh, at Eintree, we've locked down our devices so no one can put uh, uh, introduce malware through any of the ports on a, on a device, whether that's USB, removal drives, plugging in your smartphone, etc. And then we also use web filtering in our office so that we lock people down from spending their whole day on Facebook and social media. The last point there, patch management, what we've been told by the Panda guys is that if you are running a proper patch management uh, policy, uh, you're 95% protected against uh, malware and cybercrime. And what is patch management? Patch management is making sure your operating system and your uh, software applications are continuously updated. And I'll talk a lot more about that in the focus session. This is just a slide on a view of the management console. So whoever is the manager, as I said, whether that's your IT manager or your service provider, can tell exactly what's going on on your network at any time. Uh, at Eintree, we do offer a free um, malware audit. So we'll install this um, utility on your network, run it for a week or a month, and we'll give you a report and tell you what's going on. And every time we've done that, we've discovered malware to a degree on every single client. Now, whether that's um, malevolent or, or harmless, 
is questionable and there's, there's both, but we always find uh, malware when we run these audits. So same thing I said with the Teams trial, if you're interested in doing a malware audit on your system, let us know. Right, so we'll talk more about that in our cybercrime uh, session. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue a little bit about Active Directory, which is the next element in our cloud. And this is quite technical, and so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. We're going to get uh, one of our experts at Iron Tree, Keith, to talk more about this in the, in the Active Directory session. But think of Active Directory as um, a kind of a telephone exchange for your whole network apart from your, your telephony. So it's the ability to make sure that everyone's connecting through a portal that can be managed. So especially if you're working remotely, you don't want everybody configuring their own devices and having their own email and, uh, and saving their own documents to different folders and using Dropbox for some things. Active Direct is a way to manage your whole environment so that you know who's logged onto your network, what files are they accessing, um, and it's secure and it, it can, cannot be compromised. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about Active Directory in, in this session. Dave, it, yeah. Am I right in saying that Active Directory is almost like a traffic cop, telling people yeah. what they can do, what they can't do, and at least it's a single point of um, kind of, you know, instruction for, for all your computers and your users on the network. So the traffic cop will say who can turn left, who can turn right, which direction they need to go in, et cetera. Am I right? Correct. And who's connected at any one time? And, and, and Keith will show us those reports. So you're absolutely correct, Steve. I can tell you exactly what's going on in your network. It's very secure. It's the best way to manage. And especially now that you've got certain applications running on a server. So let me just um, state right now that all of the elements we're discussing today, some of them will be relevant to all of the people listening. And, and, and maybe some people will say all of these are relevant. But so, for example, for Iron Tree, all of these elements are relevant. We use all of them. But some of you might say, well, if we're moving our whole server into the cloud, well, you're going to run the Active Directory for us, which is, which is a fair comment. So, uh, but if, if this is relevant to you, you might have a server in your business, which is already, and, and I don't want to get technical here because most people, I mean, Steve, you and I didn't even know what Active Directory was until about a week ago. Um, but so if you've got a server in your premises, you're already running an Active Directory, which is routing the, which is being the traffic cop inside of your office. The problem is if you've got a traffic cop inside of your office, but then you've got some things outside of your office, like your email, then that traffic cop in your office is not able to control that traffic. Once you move your Active Directory into the cloud, we, that the traffic cop is controlling that traffic wherever it is in the world. Great analogy, Dave. Okay. All right. I'm going to move on now and hand back to Stephen to talk a bit more about data backup. Well, Dave, you've given me the most uh, boring part of the session, probably. Um, just to say, you know, in my experience, uh, you know, in my time at, at Softline and Pestle and Sage, we had thousands of employees. And, uh, and also, Dave, to your Active Directory point, these are software systems that have improved over the years. So when we first set up Softline in 1990, you know, everyone was doing their own thing. We each set up our own mail. No one knew what was going on. And then obviously products like Active Directory come about and there are better ways to work now. And I think part of the session is, is going to be explaining that. And as David so accurately said, up till a week ago, I didn't know what Active Directory was. And I have to tell you, David, while I understand the traffic cop analogy, I'm still not sure of having an Active Directory in your office versus hosted. So I loved your traffic cop thing about having a traffic cop in the office and not. So we'll talk about that. But so if I just go back to having thousands of people, the biggest issue with backups is that everybody sets it up um, and, and historically they were all backing up to either tape or a flash disk or a hard drive or sometimes a backup directory on the server. What you find happening over time is that 
you, your original directories that you're backing up have changed, but you haven't actually indicated that in the backup software you're using. And your backups, you forget where they are. Even myself, I was backing up to a flash disk, but I've got about six of them. They all look the same. Then I think, well, which flash disk is it on? And I'm getting all confused. So the two main elements to me with backup is making sure that they're happening on a scheduled basis. And making, so the timing of your backup is critical. In fact, there are three things. The timing of your backup is critical, that it runs often at the right time. The second thing is that it's backing up the right data. Because as I said, people have set it up, they all gung-ho, love what they're doing. A week later, they got involved in life and they've forgotten about it. And the third thing is having them in one place. And the cloud is the most perfect place. Because if you're using a cloud backup system, you know with certainty that if your office burns down or you lose your backup drive or lose your computer, at least all your data is in the cloud and you know that it's running up to date. In the slide here, we talk about, you know, warnings and alerts. So all of that stuff's automatically emailed to you. So if you were backing up to a hard drive, let's say, if you forget to run the backup that day, well, you've just forgotten. And you know the only time you remember is when you've hit uh, some disaster. Over here, at least you've been communicated with the whole time. Your backup hasn't run, or you ran out of space, or directly changed and you haven't updated it. So all the problems with backup traditionally are taken care of by the cloud. Um, and that's why I think it's so fantastic. Uh, if you're worried about uh, your internet line, because I remember, you know, there are about 20,000 pastel users using the Iron Tree backup system. And so many of them in the beginning said, but how much of my internet connection is it going to use? There are two issues there. First of all, internet, call it space or bandwidth, isn't the issue that it was when we launched this thing 12 years ago. The second thing is that it works very intelligently. So if you've got, let's say, 20 units that need to be backed up, the first backup, all 20 will go over the internet to Auntree's backup platform. On the next day, if you've added one more unit, so now you've got 21 units of data to back up, it will only back up that one because it adds it to what's been done. So this incremental version is fantastic. What's great as well is that we do that whole father, grandfather, child story. So if you say, um, I want to back up, I want to restore from three days ago, you can do that. I want to restore, like a beautiful calendar comes up and you say, I want to restore from the 23rd of August last year and not the whole backup set, just an Excel file that I forgot and I made a mess of it. You can do that as well. And obviously, when things get complicated, you've got Auntie's kind of tech department that you can phone. And, you know, because people get very anxious when, let's say, they've had ransomware. How do I do this? It's great to have someone to talk to, share your screen with, and they will guide you through the process. Here's the exciting stuff for you, Steve. Okay, so now let's talk about the difference between traditional backup and what's happening today. And I think that because today, what's happened, the internet's a hell of a lot faster, disk space is really cheap. So there were two major things. When people used to talk about backups, um, pretend you've got a, a computer that has Microsoft Windows running, Microsoft Office, and Pastel or QuickBooks or whatever it is. Traditionally, people used to think a backup means I'm backing up my data. And what would your data be? It would be your Pastel or QuickBooks data, and it would be your spreadsheets and your Excel documents and whatever else. But because the internet's a hell of a lot faster, you can now back up not only your data, but your entire machine. So in the old days, pretend your machine was stolen. What would you do? You would get a new machine. You would then reload Windows, reload Microsoft Office. You know, that can take you a day. And then really at the end, you would then go to Auntie and say, bring back my data, which would be your pastel data and let's say your spreadsheets. Now, if your machine gets stolen, you can do what we call disaster recovery, which is really a backup of your data and all your software, being the operating system, Office, Pastel, QuickBooks. So if your machine's stolen, all you do is you get a new machine, and you get an internet connection to our disaster recovery service and you carry on working. So that really affects downtime. 
Because now not only is your data backed up, but your software is as well. And you do not have to restore it all at once. We provide you a hosted platform. And because you've backed up your entire infrastructure, you just connect to us through an internet connection and you carry on working. Seriously, like an hour later, you carry on working. And then while you're working, you can then restore all your stuff and get new machines and load your software. And at least your, what they call your, your, your time to operation is reduced significantly. We call it your re recovery time objective. Your recovery time objective goes down to an hour instead of a week where you're reconstituting your server and buying all your machines. So we almost switch you over to a hosted environment while you're doing all that stuff. And your recovery point objective, what, that, what that's about is how far back is your data relevant? So if you are backing up full system, which really is disaster recovery, if you're doing it every hour, really it means that if everything was stolen at 10 in the morning, then everything would be current an hour later and you would just miss out on the work that you did in that hour. And once again, these things are scheduled to run on time all the time. So you don't have to think about it. It's just happening in the background. Uh, there's been a huge client of ours which had 80 concurrent users and branches all around the world. They recently had a ransomware attack and they just switched over immediately to our system and carried on working while the RT technicians were trying to get rid of the virus that had infested the office, et cetera. So disaster recovery as a service, which is really old backup stuff, i.e. data plus all your software, and being able to work immediately in the event of a ransomware attack, theft, or fire, is the ultimate backup system. Thanks, Steve. So, right. On to the next session, and this is something which is which really excites me, and something which Eintree has been using for a long time. Voice over IP telephony, and I'm going to bring in Marizette. Marizette, you you there? Yes, I am. Cool. So I'm going to bring in Marizette from Euphoria. Euphoria are our, our voice over IP telephony provider. We've been using them for I don't know, I think almost since they started. Um, and uh, yeah, so Marizette and I are just going to have a little chat. So Marizetti, if you just want to briefly explain the concept of voice over IP and, and how it differs from telecom. Sure. So, you know, voice over IP or as they, as they also call it, a voice over internet protocol. Um, don't want to get into too much of the technical details. So basically what that means is it's a technology that allows voice to travel over the internet, you know, instead of uh, the old legacy analog lines that uh, telecom is using. And how does it differ from telecom, Marizette? So because telecom is using, uh, you know, legacy technology, which is, uh, you know, majority of their, of their lines are still analog lines, which means that there's a physical line coming from, you know, the telecom exchange that runs to, you know, the corner of your street with a line that goes directly into your office that needs to connect to a physical piece of hardware, whether that is a, a PABX or a server to allow that uh, voice traffic to, to then go to, um, you know, all the other providers out there and link that call. Um, it's not necessary anymore. Uh, with voice over IP, you basically um, get a SIP username and password, which means that you can link it to, to any device that is uh, SIP compliant or, you know, even your, your computer as such um, that allows you to make voice calls over a PC or over a, a physical device or even a mobile device. Um, so it's a lot more, you've got a lot more mobility you know, you guys spoke earlier about uh, cloud computing. So in a sense, this, this works very much the same. If your business had to burn down um, and you've got absolutely nothing, you could theoretically, you know, spin up another instance and work from home and be totally connected as if, you know, nothing has ever happened. So, so that's, you know, great. That's exactly what's, what's happened with Iontree. I mean, we did switch to voice over, uh, voice over IP telephony, as I said, probably about seven or eight years ago. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But what, what the beauty of it is, is besides the fact, just one other thing, uh, Marizette, what, what, I've, what I've seen happening is telecom are, are kind of um, killing their, their copper lines anyhow. So all these traditional... Uh, telecom PABXs that you've got on premise are actually going to become useless, I assume, in the next uh, 
your two. Absolutely agree with you. Um, yeah, you know, Telcom, Telcom uh, took, took a little bit of time before they, they, they jumped on the VoIP uh, bandwagon. Um, you know, even if you look at uh, other providers like Vodacom, MTN, you know, people seem to think that it all runs on a GSM network, but the back end of that GSM network is an actual fact of VoIP network. So, you know, people don't realize that they, that they use VoIP on a daily basis when they, when they make cell phone calls because it's, it uses the VoIP back end network to link all of those GSM calls. So, uh, you know, pretty much um, everybody in this, in this uh, webinar today would, would, have, would, have ha would have actually had access to VoIP calls without even knowing it. Okay, and, and what the beauty of, of VoIP for me, one of the biggest things is really this ability to work remotely. So the, the, the entry example is case in point. When, uh, when we decided last week that we needed to send all our employees home to work, in fact, it was our other partner, Tyre, who, who said, look, we've got to do this, guys, before we even knew there was a lockdown, and he was actually right. Um, we just told everyone on, on Friday afternoon, look, take your PCs home. Um, and on Monday morning, we'll have a meeting at half past eight and make sure everyone's online and carry on working. Now, um, if we had a telecom PABX in the office, that would have been absolutely impossible. But it's just completely seamless. And, you know, I, I know we rely a lot on, on email. And, uh, and as, as we were saying earlier, we really uh, promote the Microsoft Teams uh, um, utility to, to collaborate. The reality is you need voice as well. You need some kind of telephony because not all of your customers are going to have teams right now. And uh, the, the fact that we could just tell our, our people on Friday, go home, take your laptops, which, which we, we only have laptops in our, in our office, and that's because of load shedding, so that if, if there is load shedding, we've got batteries that we can use on the laptops. We just tell them, take them home and uh, plug into your home uh, uh, router, and on Monday morning, you, you're online, which is exactly what happened. So uh, you talked about um, remote working. Uh, um, my Rosette, I, I know you guys have got a great uh, software, which means you can use your, your mobile device or your PC to, to make and receive calls wherever you are, correct? That's absolutely correct. So, you know, d d depending on um, who your, your VoIP provider is, it's going to depend what, what functionality they, they actually uh, give you. So with Euphoria Telecom, we've got a, a browser phone application, so you can log in from anywhere. Uh, we've got a desktop application, a uh, soft phone desktop applica application, as well as a mobile application. So, you know, it really gives you the ability to be accessible wherever you are, whether you're in the car, whether you're sitting at home working off your laptop, or, you know, even if you don't have internet at home and you need to work from an internet cafe, you can log in with your, with your, um, with your soft phone over, over uh, even using an internet cafe's uh, PC and be accessible and, and work. So it really gives you, um, your company, um, a vast, um, or vast access to, to, to being accessible, um, from anywhere. Excellent. And, and one thing I must add, um, it's also, if you, if any of you are thinking, yeah, well, okay, I'll, I'd like to do this, but what do I do with my existing telecom number? Um, your euphoria guys or any VoIP provider can port your existing telecom number. So when people, when you've switched over, people dial the existing number they've got for your company or your house, and those calls will be routed through to your uh, VoIP um, exchange. Um, my Rosette, we were talking earlier, and you were telling me about uh, who you cater for. So I don't know if you want to just discuss this slide for a second. Yeah. So look, it's definitely possible to 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 migrate your 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 telephone line. Um, you know, that is limited at the moment to uh, geographical numbers. So your normal landline number, whether it's a, a 021, uh, 011, um, 013, those type of numbers are very easily portable. Um, you know, the, the limitations um, at the moment uh, comes in when you're looking at uh, 086 numbers. However, those numbers you can point to, to a designated number and still receive your, your inbound calls. Um, yeah, I mean, customers that we cater for, uh, you know, are ranging from, you know, startups working out of their garages to, to listed companies. At the moment, we've, we've got over 4,000 companies that depend on our service. Um, we've been around for about 10 years now, so we've, we've really uh, come along and, and have experienced every 
single VoIP issue that you could possibly get. So, you know, working, working hard in, in resolving, um, you know, technical issues when it comes to connectivity and, and making our system work on, on the South African infrastructure. Um, we've, we've spent a lot of time to, to become experts in, in, in our technology and, and how we give it to customers so that, so that it's easy for them to understand and also utilize on a, on a daily basis. Okay, and, and uh, I know that um, you guys have a full range of management reports. You can see some of them on the screen. These are all uh, pulled from the cloud-based uh, PABX. So just to reiterate, you don't have any device in your office anymore uh, which, which kind of receives and, and routes calls to the correct extension. It's all based in the cloud, which means you can you know, go take these calls from anywhere, as, as Murray Zet said. And uh, we use a lot of these reports that uh, Euphoria provide as well. And Marizet, you also got a, a voicemail and recording facility? That's absolutely correct. So with the voicemail uh, facility, um, it goes as far as, you know, if you, if you had to have a missed call and someone le leaves a message, it will send you an email. Um, and it goes something like this, you know, at this time, this number, um, left you a message and the actual WAV message can be attached to your email. So again, doesn't matter where you are, you can listen to that and you can, and you can return uh, the call. Um, now that's included with, with all of our packages. Call recording as well. Um, call recording is, um, is such a, a, a delicate uh, functionality because of um, all the security that, that surrounds it. So Euphoria's call recording is completely compliant. It's backed up. Um, it, it's secure, it's encrypted when it, when it travels, so your core recording is safe. Core recording is an additional cost at Euphoria because of all the security uh, standards that goes around, um, you know, making sure that uh, your information stays safe. Mm -hmm. But uh, you could definitely record all calls or even select specific extensions that you'd like recording on if you don't want your, your entire business to be, to be recorded. Marisa, give us an idea for a, like a 10 or 20 man business. Uh, what, what's the average cost you're seeing across, across your client base for people who are using your system? And, and more or less, if you know how that compared to what their telecom bills were. Okay. So, so with Euphoria, if, you, if you're looking at a, at a general business, uh, we've got two options. The first option is our express option. Um, if you look at 10 extensions, it's about uh, 650 Rand per month, excluding VAT. Um, if that same uh, company makes about 1,000 uh, minutes worth of mobile calling, on top of the 650, you're looking at about another 790 Rand, which gives you a total bill of 1,440 Rand. Um, our second option, um, well, let me, let me first give you the, the telecom equivalent to that. Uh, you'd probably look at uh, telecom lines, which would give you uh, four, in, four incoming and out, out, outgoing lines, which means four people can be on the line at the same time, at 1,048 Rand. Uh, plus, in order for those telecom lines to work, so that is before you can actually make a call, you need a device to attach to those lines. So you're looking at your average PBX cost if you are uh, renting or financing it, you're looking at about a 1,250 uh, 1, Rand on top of, of that. And that brings you, um, excluding the calls, um, you know, over 2,000 Rand already before you've started making calls. Um, if you include 1,000 uh, minutes on top of that, you're looking at about 3,438 Rand a month. Um, and that is just for 1,000 mobile calls. Um, I've also worked that out on, on the cheapest mobile rate available on Telcom at the moment. So, you know, you're looking at about a thousand rand saving there on a on a on a small uh, ten user business um, with basic functionality. Um, if I had to if I had to take that up uh, to an enterprise connection, um, the same equivalent at Euphoria would be about two thousand four hundred and ninety rand, um, and then uh, a twenty user on Telcom would be about four thousand five hundred and sixty nine rand. So you can, you can see for yourself, you know, on the, on the voice calls, you're looking at about a, a 30 to 45% saving. And then where, where the real saving comes in at the end of the day is the technology behind it that drives it. Because you don't need to have a physical piece of hardware um, that, 
that routes all your calls because everything is happening in the cloud. And that's where the massive saving comes in um, where it comes to access, you know, uh, feasibility, you know, rolling up mobile uh, stations or remote working stations because you don't have to rely on a, on a physical piece of hardware that's sitting in your office um, that needs to get maintained and, and all of those other things that goes with uh, on-site um, okay. solutions. Like, like much of the other stuff we've covered in the seminar, I think, you know, what I always say in these kind of conversations is what, what strikes me is that a lot of the stuff that we're suggesting uh, or recommending uh, is sure is, is going to cost a business more. So if you look at our cyber security solution, you're paying a fee per, per, per device. If you want Microsoft Teams, you're paying a subscription fee. And a lot of small, small of our customers, smaller customers have said, yeah, you know, but we can't afford all these additional costs. And, and, and I say, well, you know, the point is we're so often stuck in our ways and we, we don't look at the costs that, that we have that exist that actually could be reduced. And for me, telephony is the big one. And if I take IronTree as, as an example, we, we ditched Telcom, I think, of, uh, probably about seven years ago. Uh, so seven years ago, IronTree was probably uh, less than half of the size of it as it was today. And our telecom bill at the time was about 22,000 rand a month. Uh, today, uh, we've, been, we've been using Euphoria for six or seven years. Uh, we have about 28 extensions. Uh, we, we make and receive approximately 10,000 calls a month. Now, that's quite interesting because with the connectivity today with fiber, and I think fiber is becoming very pervasive, um, the, the call quality is fine. We've got call recording, we've got voicemail, 10,000 calls, quite a lot of calls. Um, and our, and our, our VoIP bill today is between 10 and 12,000 Rand a month. So it's more or less half of what our telecom bill was about seven years ago. Um, just a little anecdotal stuff, I must tell you guys if you're interested. Uh, some of us have ditched uh, telecom at home as well, and I think probably all of us. And I know what I did is I just uh, installed a, a Euphoria extension from, from our office uh, cloud PBX. I ported my telecom landline number to, to my house extension. And, uh, and, and that's it. I don't have a telecom line at home anymore at all, um, which is very cost effective as well. And it also means I've got the soft phone on my cell phone. Uh, uh, um, my wife said she insisted we did have a landline, which it's not really a landline, but we've still got our 021 um, household number. And uh, it doesn't matter where we are, we can receive or make calls. So it really works quite well. Um, yes, we're going to cover a lot more about VoIP in, in the detailed VoIP session. So if you guys haven't registered for that and you're interested, please register for that. And, and thank you, Marizet, and, and we'll talk to you again in the uh, VoIP session. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I'm looking forward to the, to the VoIP session uh, to elaborate a little bit more on the features and the capabilities. Uh, to, and I, th I think you're going to uh, do a demo as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, it will, it will give people a clear indication of what is possible and what they can do and, yeah, just, just to enhance uh, what, what they already have. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Marisette. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Same uh -huh. to you guys. All right. We're going to move on to the last thing we want to discuss here, and I'm going to hand this back to, to Stephen, and this is about uh, planning for disruptive events. And, Steve, if you want to just do a brief P4C um, chat. Okay, um, David, I feel that I'm the perfect person to, to talk about this because I'm so bad at it. I never plan for anything. And I, I've got to hand, uh, you know, accolade to, to Ta, David and Yaku, who, when this lockdown occurred, the business had been organized in such a way that it was so easy to do. So a tool like Plan for Continuity, uh, you know, for me, that's what P4C stands for, Plan for Continuity. For a guy like me, who's a bit all over the show and operates in a knee-jerk way, it's fantastic. Because first of all, it's a complete cloud service. So you can see the picture on the screen, whether it's on your workstation, laptop, phone, iPad, you log into a cloud portal. And what it really allows you to do is to set up very specific plans in the event of a situation. Now, the situation could be your generator has conked out, 
It could be uh, the Cyril Ramaphosa saying you've got to go into lockdown. It could be an earthquake, fire, whatever situation you think would cause issues in your business. You can now very methodically put it down in a plan. Now, a lot of you could be saying, well, I could put down a plan in a Word document. The problem with plans, though, as Eisenhower said, is execution is so important. And this tool allows you to track the execution of the plan. So you can see um, exactly who has done what they were supposed to do. Did they do it on time? Were there documents that had to be filled out? Where are these documents? I mean, I'll give you a very simple example. Let's talk about my own household. Whenever my partner has an accident, they always say, Stephen, how do I do this thing? Who do I phone? What forms do I fill out? Do, uh, if, do I claim from insurance? Um, who's the panel beater, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. I could set up a plan for that and have it a, an attached document in a repository. So this is the document you fill out. This is the person that you speak to at the insurance person. This is the person you speak to at the panel beta. And everybody's communicated within the plan. So my whole family would be kept abreast of exactly how far the plan is in being executed. The, the, you would get WhatsApp messages, mobile SMSs, emails, however you want to communicate. Everybody in the business, or in this case, my family, is kept up to date with what's been happening. Dave, a very good example for me again in my old life at Pastel. You know, with Sage One, we used internet solutions as the hosting provider for Sage One, which had about 50,000 businesses using it. We used to just rely on our IT department to make sure that the server was running. But if my IT department was on holiday, and let's say um, internet solutions went down, we wouldn't have had a clue what to do. If that was set up on a plan, the whole plan could be triggered. Emails would have been sent out to the relative staff members on exactly what to do when. As each step in the plan was finished, you would tick it off. Everybody in the team would be told this is being done. We would have known who to phone. We would have known where to fail over to. So I think that this is a great tool to just for peace of mind, to know that if anything happens, the phone numbers, the action steps are all so defined in the plan that there, it, there's just, it takes all chaos, anxiety out of the equation. And it gives you great reports that can be audited because imagine if your insurance provider says, well, I want to know that, you know, your loss of profits claim that you've put in, you know, what did you do to make sure that it didn't happen? You could just email them this report that is auto-generated as the plan is executed by the responsible individuals allocated with tasks in the, in the plan. So it's fantastic software. Once again, you know, everybody thinks it wouldn't happen to me. But I think this coronavirus example has alerted people that weird things happen in life. And it's great to just know that this thing's there. And you can create as many plans as you want with as many employees or staff members involved. And um, as I said, peace of mind, no chaos and order, which is something I think everybody would enjoy a bit of in their lives. Thanks, Steve. We're just gonna end off on, on, this, on the starting slide and I'm gonna, uh, Yaka, I'm, I'm hoping you've created the poll to be active that we, we'd like you to all to, to fill in the, the, the poll. Um, and really, just to wrap up by saying, once again, we are going to have a dedicated uh, session on each one of these elements. The dedicated sessions will not be this long. I think we're going to limit them to 40 or 45 minutes each or less. Um, and just finally to say that uh, whilst this has worked for Iron Tree in this period of lockdown completely, I mean, you wouldn't know if you find Iron Tree that we're not at the office at all. Whatever the solutions are that we're offering, we are able to implement and support during this period. I do understand that some businesses are not able to work remotely. I mean, if you've got a restaurant or a shop or a hairdresser or a dentist or whatever, clearly you're not able to work at all. But for those of you who are able to work uh, remotely, financial services or whatever it is you do that's a, that's a 
a business that's remotely ca ca capable. Um, we are able to help you in this time. If you do want help, if you do want to add any of these components, um, then give us a call. At this point, I'm going to hand over to Yaka and thank you very much all for attending. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Just go to the next slide for me. Um, so the final slide that we put up there, we've used this uh, probably for the last year um, in, in our presentations. So, but it, it drills home so many points that we're trying to bring across today. So a couple of years ago, the World Economic Forum, um, they, they surveyed a couple of experts, well, a few experts at that event. And they asked what really scares global leaders? What keeps them up at night? And you can see there, point one, two, three, four, and five. Point one and two, um, you know, not much can be do uh, can be done around that. Um, you know, climate change is a, is, a, is also an extremely um, scary scenario to the world today. And then, obviously, the natural disasters would include something like a pandemic that just hit our our, our globe. But point four and five is something that that we as business owners and as individuals can control we can protect ourselves and we can make sure that the insulation around our business is good so that we can actually just get through those those disasters if they hit um guys this is really in summary of what we discussed today i really hope you guys uh, enjoyed the session um the poll is still open so by all means just go cast your vote um, I look forward to speaking to all of you again at the individual sessions. Um, I'm glad they've mentioned the, the timing. Uh, we are going to be a little bit more concise, um, but we had a lot to say today. And I think in today's age or in this environment that we find ourselves in, um, finding or listening to somebody else's voice can actually be quite beneficial for all our mindsets. Um, guys, stay safe, stay home. And uh, yeah, please, please, uh, Please share this uh, webinar with anybody that you think uh, yeah, could, could find it helpful. Yes, Steve. I just want to say I think that this is a great way to do things. And what I love about what we're doing is that it's practical and relevant. And we've been through the trial and errors and tribulations of doing this stuff. So hopefully everybody will find it useful. Um, somebody just asked a question about where do you do this poll? Because I was thinking the same thing. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, and guys, this is a, a, an assumption, I'm assuming it's part of your options on the Zoom uh, menu. So if you maybe just hover or move your mouse, you'll, uh, a menu would pop up at the bottom. Um, just have a look if the poll is available there. Um, worst case scenario, if we don't get any votes, I'll send you guys the, the survey directly after this meeting uh, or directly after this session. But uh, yeah, I'm... I'm I think it's a safe assumption to say it's part of your menu items at the bottom. Because um, I can't see it. Uh, that's interesting. I did actually say panelists can't vote, Steve. So um, oh. maybe that's why you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like uh, the general consensus is nobody can see the poll. So yeah. guys, yeah, this is obviously a hidden functionality. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to send this through to you guys afterwards. Everybody who has attended. Um, so by all means go vote. I think it will give us some clarity. It will give us some good um, insights in the dedicated sessions. So yeah, I appreciate your time. I'm going to end the poll then because clearly nobody can vote. And it was really good structured questions. So you, you definitely missed out, but I'm going to get it into your inboxes directly after this webinar. Thank you cool. guys. Yeah, I think that's a wrap. Yeah. Can you and David and I just have a quick uh, Teams? We can, yes, absolutely. With a click of a button, we can have that running. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, have a good one. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye bye.